Yay. This is Julie. Say hi. Ah, hi. She's so good to hold space while we do all this. Let's see what's going on with this thing. All right. It says we're live. Does anybody yes. see that we're live? We are live yes. on Facebook. We are live. Are we? Look at yes, that. That's what it says. Yay. Must be true. Hey, everybody. It's Dr. Sandy. And I want to welcome you to tonight's episode. I did a little advertising, a little last minute. We got, uh, we got some beautiful nurses here. And I cannot wait to hear a little bit about them. I have over here, Leanne Meyer. She is the host of Once a Nurse, Always a Nurse. And um, I'm going to read you her bio. Uh, since the advent of COVID-19 pandemic in the U United States, my two goals have become to provide professional mental health support 24-7 appropriate to nurses experience moral trauma and grief and to bring together nurse professionals ready to create a template for transforming healthcare in the United States from a nursing holistic perspective rather than a broken one. And I know a lot of us, we talk about, we talk about this a lot, don't we, on here? Um, money focused, soul killing, disease care system. That's awesome. That's so Kim, Evans. <laughs> Kim Evans, she's going to be on with us next week. Uh, it's all in her book, Transforming Healthcare. She brought me, um, she sent me a book and I have been looking through it. It's amazing. Amazing. Um, Very good. And uh, so, and that was achieved in January, 2021 with uh, advent of nursestransforminghealthcare.org. 2021 in February, um, the edited version of Let It Flow, One Nurse's Entrepreneurial Journey by Brian Omahika. I guess we're gonna find out a little bit about that. Host of Once a Nurse, Always a Nurse weekly podcast, always uh, allowing nurses to, uh, the opportunity to hear and interact with other nurses and share incredible work that they do and amazing people that they are. And in December, 2020, listenership topped over 120,000 people in 70, over 70 countries. Uh, currently connecting and influencing nurses and healthcare providers to collaborate on creating a nurse-led integrative medicine model to revolutionize healthcare by focusing on creating and maintaining patient holistic health from a cradle to grave. So last week we had on Dr. Silver, he talked to us a little bit mm -hmm. about John. himself mm -hmm. and about what he's about. And uh, so, and then this new- The rest of it, you can skim over. That's just background stuff, 40 years okay. of- Well, 40 that's, years of that's nursing. Important. I yeah. think we need to, I need to, we need to mention <laughs> this, okay? This is actually, to me, this is pretty big, especially for the nurses that are out there that are struggling. A lot of nurses are leaving. A lot of nurses are not staying 40 years, but you've been in nursing for 40 years as an RN and a variety of hospital units, including ICU, hospice, med surge, education, and obstetrics. So you had a wide variety of nursing. Pretty wide. And you almost have to, like anymore. Like you have to switch it up because otherwise, if you're staying in one spot, at least we have a big field we can we can switch on and off. And um and then a management trainer for 15 years, taught and consulted on conflict resolution. She's my girl right here. <laughs> and uh, graduated from St. Luke's Nursing in Duluth in 1976. I'm not going to date and I'm not going to say how old and when I was born. Uh, BSN at Metro State University in 1997, two years towards a master's in writing. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> the Coaches Training Institute for Personal Coaching taught an RN refresher course for five years in Normandale Community College in Bloomington, certified in Myers-Briggs Type Inventory MBTI TKI CDP assessments for individuals and groups. So I want to welcome you to Nurses, Nurse Talk with Dr. Sandy. I am so thankful to have you and, and I'm going to dive right in and I'm going to have Melissa introduce her friend that's behind you. Um, yeah. I so am so grateful to have met these two, Leanne and Melissa. I have not met her friend yet behind Surprise her. guest. Would it, Surprise guest. Would it be a Melissa thing if I didn't just talk <laughs> just random in? Like, let's and, you know, and, that's, that. and that's fine because, you know, there's, there's a thing that we have to do. And we were talking about this yesterday, last night, 
about how we have to bring nurses back to center. I don't know if people have seen that I've slowed down on posting articles because it is overwhelming how bad it is right now. And I'm trying to uplift people and I'm trying to keep myself like I have people reaching me, reaching me on the back end and talking to me. So I how much can one person take? And it's not a matter of, I don't want to do it. It's a matter of, okay, so I need to, this is kind of a dire need for, to start changing this culture. And yes, we've made awareness, but how many of us are talking about this stuff to other people? So, and I want to introduce to you, you saw me in Times Square. Did you guys see the video on Times Square? People were looking at me like this, like they were looking at their book, like, (laughs) <laughs> but they were listening so that's why I was like I wasn't crazy when I said it so if you get a chance watch that video it's it's quite interesting um I didn't have my megaphone and I was screaming the whole day that day so my voice was going low otherwise my megaphone I would have had it on the sirens and the cops would have loved me there they did love me. um all the way in New York loud. Huh? you'd have been very New York very loud you know what here's the thing I don't think Besides the half naked lady bathing in the street, like with her water bottle and lathering up, I, I think, I think I would have been very minimal. Yeah. And oh, <laughs> I wanted to have I more walk people right there. Past you like, oh, that's normal. It's New York I wanted, I wanted to have more people there, but in reality, I know nobody's going to be there because of the fact this is such a traumatic thing for a lot of nurses. They can't even talk about it. And without further ado, I want to introduce to you, Melissa Cortez. She has the Cortex Energy Solutions. And I absolutely, like I've fallen for this lady in a, in a non, you know, <laughs> way, that kind of way. But like, a, like I am like in way. love with my newfound, not only my Hungry to Speak family, but like, you know, because you get in a shell. Like you don't, my hunger to speak family is my speaking family and my nursing family is so broken and so hurt. It's like, nobody is laughing and nobody is having fun. We have fun. Nurses have fun. And right now it's not fun. And meeting Melissa has been a joy just talking to her. Like I've talked to her a couple of weeks ago, but great people graduated from Towson university in Baltimore, Maryland. And I was living in Maryland as some of you guys know. Um, with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, she has worked in critical care, acute care, long-term care, skilled nursing, management, home health, hospice, and trauma. After COVID crisis, contra- uh, a COVID con- that is really a tongue twister for me. You can't even After say COVID it. Crisis, so <laughs> trauma just by looking at it. Um, crisis contract at Mass Gen. She decided that she was going to revolutionize, re- revolutionize healthcare by teaching nurses to respond to chaotic environment by using tools. She uses herself on a daily basis as a military wife and mom to three boys. She's an excellent resource on maintaining calm and chaos. That. Yeah. And is- thank you so much for having here, me here, Dr. Sandy. You know, this is Wonderful. Anytime that we can speak about the profession and shine light on what's going on. I posted the other day on LinkedIn that like the, what I love about the moon, okay, is that even in darkness, this little light can illuminate everything. So yeah. this is Julie Prius. She is a nurse. She was a nurse for what, 23 years, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then found doTERRA, um, essential oils, and just a way to provide wellness in a holistic way environment. Um, so I'll let you introduce yourself. So she's here helping me because I have a really large community here um, of corporate wellness clients um, that really could have value and benefit from these techniques. Essential oils and the supplements, for instance, Kapiba has saved my life. Um, and I mean that in, in every sense of the word, I was going to go on Xanax and Wellbutrin and all the stuff. And I, Julie said, try this, you know, we've been friends for over a year now and she lived in Washington state and she's like, I stopped microdosing and I was like, I need something. And she was like, try the Kapiba. It's natural. It's from a tree in the Amazon. I'm like, I'm from the yeah. Amazon. Let me try that. So <laughs> we did. And, um, it's been wonderful. And so, um, I've been incorporating it into cortex. And so this is Julie. Yeah, Julie, you, you and I need to talk. Yeah, um, about that. Yesterday you mentioned, because I'm not on any of my ADHD meds, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners can tell. So, <laughs> like, I need that probably more than anybody. <laughs> and I'm sure Les Brown would appreciate that as well. Um, it's so vital that essential oils there, and I want, I want to hear more about this. And again, we have the founder of doTERRA. 
Is that what I'm hearing? No, I'm 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 a representative of DoTerra. So okay. it's, a, it's a the largest essential oil company in the world right now. It's a billion dollar company, went billion dollars after seven years. It was a need. You can tell it was a need okay. because it just shot up. And I was introduced in 2014 to doTERRA after I was in a car accident and had some chronic um, issues in my body. And I started um, reluctantly using the essential oils, not really believing in plant medicine because my brain was all about pharmaceuticals and mm -hmm. uh, quickly learned that these were really potent and very strong. And if you use them appropriately and effectively and for specific health concerns, then they can actually really heal from the inside out. So they, they have, it's, it's transformed my life. And I remember the day that I got off one of my medications that I was in, you know, collaboration with my physician to get off of for some um, heart arrhythmias. And I got off my last one. And I just said, I just banged my hand on the, on the table. And I said, oh my goodness, if I can do this for myself, I can teach other people how to do this, how to heal themselves in their homes and not have to have you know, be on several prescription medications and learn how to eat better, move your body mindset, um, really have have a holistic approach to your your wellness in your home. And I'm just so grateful that I took that leap because we are in the middle of, we are in the eye of the storm of ha of people needing desperately to learn tools to, to heal themselves in their home. And especially nurses. Especially no, yeah. nurses. Yeah. And, and, and this is, this is really great because, you know, if you're looking on our live feed, you'll see that we only have maybe one person, but you're going to see, start to see more and more people. And when you look at the numbers, they go up. Um, so I want to make sure that, you know, you know, I want to, I want to throw this out there. So I was, I mentioned it kind of a little bit to Leanne and Melissa. I want to have a speakers Academy for nurses. Like I want to have a, it would have, it, it would be a paid <laughs> speakers academy because I, I mean, I would be doing it and, but I think it's essential. I mean, you don't, the nurses would not have to talk about anything that they don't want to talk about. But if you look at, you know, like what they've done with military, right. They've done the comedy, you know, the comedy clubs and stuff like that. Nurses, I would be afraid for them to get up <laughs> on the stage the right now. So, I'll say that it. It's been, I'm just, let's see, I left Boston in May of last year. So it's been over a year now. And I'm just getting to the point where I can actually tell some of the things that I've seen yep. um, and the way things happen. Cause I just, I wasn't ready. I, I wasn't ready to tell their stories. Um, and I really think that now is an opportunity. I think like with your background, Dr. Sandy, you have the ability to hold space and provide um what these people need as they go forward telling their stories because I I will I will say that you know I have PTSD from everything that I saw mainly because where I was the majority of the patient population were Hispanic or Latino and I was one of the only nurses that was able to translate um, so I did a lot of tablet holding I did a lot of telling people that we've done everything kind of thing mm -hmm. um, translators weren't allowed in um, so, and Mass Gen did it right. I mean, now they're um, Ma Massachusetts Brigham and Women's because they bought, they're the largest healthcare system in the United States now, deservingly so. They are yeah. so innovative and wonderful. And I can't say enough good things about what I experienced, um, but it was just traumatic all around. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I worked trauma in Baltimore City. We averaged nine gunshot wounds a night. It's not like yep. I've never seen anything, you know? Right. Um, but I think it was, more, a little... yeah, it was more of a hit close to home because I saw these people that have come here for a better life and, you know, multiple family members died. Their whole families were killed. And I kept saying, like, I was so happy a couple months, I think it was a month ago or a couple of weeks ago, the New York Times put out an article that said Hispanic people, especially Hispanic men between the ages of like 38 and 45 or something were eight and a half times more likely to die of COVID. And I kept saying, like, there's something about this. There's something about this. It's got to be an RNA. You know what I mean? And we were right. And um, it was validating almost to know that there was a reason why. And um, it, it kind of, like, drove me forward. 
And I think a lot of nurses are in this position where they're stuck. Like this is just happening. It's going to keep happening. There's nobody that's doing anything for us. There's no uh, light at the end of the tunnel. And I like kept refusing to believe that. And Leanne will tell you, like, every time we get on the call together, I'm like, okay, we can complain, but where's the solution? What's the solution? Where's the positive part from this? Because for me, it was remembering every single person that I couldn't save. seeing their faces, remembering their names, like Rodriguez, Hernandez, you know, everybody and remembering that, okay, we have to do something for them. I want you to, I want you to think about something and, you know, and you're hitting on a lot of great points. And somebody said something to me not too long ago when I was talking to them on the back end, because I talked to a lot of our members um, and our, and to join nurses against violence, it's free. I'm going to have to look into Uh, things that are going to bring in more revenue so I could spend more time with people because this is about building relationships. That's how you eliminate violence in healthcare. And also we were, we're tight. If we just all united and I have the tools to unite us, if I could free up my time to be able to do that, like I'm not the save all end all, but my niche is violence, right? And Leanne and yours is about transforming healthcare. Mine is about getting these nurses. I got my psychiatric nurse practitioner for a reason. And that is to take this trauma and flip it into something that we could talk about how and why you became a nurse. We can talk. It doesn't even have to be about nursing, but getting somebody to do this, to talk starts breaking and chipping away. You you heard that down the secrets. That saying, well, who is it? Is it Deepak Chokra who talks about the frozen chickens? I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't really focus Have you on heard that right analogy? Up. No. So it's this, I have to share this and then I'll let Leanne jump in. But this is really <laughs> important because I share this with all my nurses at the bedside. Each time you experience an instance of moral distress, which is where you're forced to do something against your ethical and moral yes. code, which we're having because of staffing, okay? Um, you freeze the chicken. Like this raw chicken gets shoved down in your freezer and you use a lot of energy to keep it frozen. And each instance that comes along, you freeze more and more chickens. Then your freezer gets full and you have no energy for anything else. Your kids, your family, your husband, your work life, whatever. Then something happens and you start talking about the frozen chicken and I, we deep dive deep down, we pull out the frozen chicken and what does it do? It thaws, it smells really nasty. Mm -hmm. You know, it starts condensating. So you start crying, but as soon as we can get rid of the chicken, we address it and we throw it out. You've got more energy and more space in there to use for something else. So Mm -hmm. the goal of PTSD prevention and what we do at Cortex is to prevent you from freezing the chickens in the first place. Yes. Like how do we use breath work and mindfulness and meditation and all the woo woo crap that actually works. And I can say it because I used it. It saved my life to prevent the frozen chickens. And you, Dr. Sandy are going to have a whole lot of frozen chickens to thaw. And it's, it's working. I mean, we went from nothing in 2017 to, we have a whole lot of something happening. We have people going out for coffee. Okay, so we've got this problem. How are we going to address it? Start telling people that they're not alone and showing them that they're not alone. Showing that there's a huge amount of us out there that are all going through the same thing. So these people now know, our nurses and nursing family and even healthcare family now know, oh my gosh, these things are, aren't just happening to me because that was one barrier we, had to, we have to overcome. Another is the public. If we can get the public, oh God. We need the to public to start that. talking about them, what's happening. If we start telling people to say, hey, get the word out. Nursing is a great profession, but with your help, with your help, you know, I had total strangers holding that sign up in Times Square. Oh. And I did that for a reason because I wanted to show that there are people that care. So there's a weird reason why I do things. Sometimes I don't understand it at the time, but I just have to do it. And, um, so when I want to back up to what you're saying, so moral distress is COVID trauma is what I dub it as, because that's exactly what it is. Moral distress is actually learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is that thawing of the chicken, all of that well, stuff. I think 
the moral distress comes from the fact that we don't have a choice a lot of times we can't learned, do anything yeah. and our voice is so silenced mm -hmm. that we don't have a choice you can't just walk thing. away from your patient in an instance no. of moral distress no that's what they do it's 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 the same it's actually historic but it's, it's also it's, in covid right now there's nobody that can help there isn't it's not systems change that can be immediate right, right now and they're not, not going the to the doctor there's nothing they can do right now Right. So that's like the focus is on the future of fixing things, but how do we deal with it right now? Right. And that's thing why I, I want to put in here too, is that so many nurses don't believe that anybody is thinking about them. And, and I've been there, right. I've been what we used to call in the trenches. And, you know, it's, we talk about these battle metaphors and this is exactly what it is, is being on the front lines of the battlefield. Right. And you have no idea what behind you other than more nurses in trauma uh, is going on. But I, I've got to tell you, there are a lot of people out here like us that you may or may not hear about us right now, but you will be hearing about us because we are really reaching out into the country to find who are those people who are like-minded and realize that, you know, what, what Melissa has been talking about we can't just keep moving the chairs around on the Titanic. We've got to change the structure of healthcare. And there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to like that, but it, it is what Let's we have do to do. And mm -hmm. part of, of getting that to happen is opening up people actually giving their stories. And, you know, all of us have been listening to these stories and they're heart wrenching. Mm -hmm. um, even before the story started coming out back in a year ago in, in May and June, I would be up all night long walking around my house just because I was, I, I could feel exactly what nurses were experiencing at the bedside. I knew enough from the experiences I had had of trauma um, to, to recognize that that's what they were going through too. And there was nothing I felt like I could do in that moment until I met Melissa and um, things started to change. And I think, you know, Melissa and I have a whole lot of in common. So we both have do two different terminologies when it comes to that. I don't believe in the moral part because this is saying that compassion fatigue, compassion fatigue, yes, they're tired, but they're beyond tired. We're, we're fighting World War III out there. This yeah. is with, with needles and with broken and reused and repurposed PPE. Like this, there's nothing that's helping us right now. And so I say COVID trauma because, and then the moral can come in, I believe with the violence when people are punching you and spitting on you, this, all this stuff was happening before COVID. Now it's like even worse because people are scared and they don't know what to do. And then you got the, I saw a video of a nurse getting attacked. I have, I will not release it. Um, but she got, it was the, um, it was a new term that I never heard of. And I've been in nursing for a very long time. It was, um, doomsday. It was something the doomsday. Um, I don't remember somebody may be able to chime in, but it was like right after he attacked and started punching or whatever, he died. He just died. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't and know what to call it, but that, that was happened fighting. <laughs> Yeah. It, and it, it's like fighting for your life and you know, it's your time and you just don't want it to be done. Well, yeah. And, like criminal agitation because nobody knows how yeah. to do palliative care in this country, but that's a whole different conversation. We could whole have. different. Yep. And, and I, we have a lot of room to grow in healthcare, but fact of the matter is we have almost 5 million RNs in this country. This is not including LPNs. This is not including CNAs, which CNAs nursing are more than likely going to nursing school. I'm sorry, Melissa. Nurse students, nursing students. Yeah. Students. Yeah. They're probably, yeah, they're probably going to nursing school and then, and then they're leaving. Unfortunately, and, and, and I, I definitely want to dedicate this episode of this speech, you know, our, our webinar to Lily Negret. She was a former student of mine and she passed away on Saturday. And I'm um, so sorry when you told me that it just broke my heart. Brand new nurse or uh, she was going to nurse. About school. to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fighting and fighting and fighting to get through the program. A big heart. We didn't see, you know, I don't, I'm not, I was never friendly with my students, but I was friendly with my students. Um, 
I just didn't get personal with my students. And I, and it, the, the fact of the matter is, is that these are the times that, you know, a lot of us were nursing instructors, you know, at some point, and we're teaching these new nurses to go out there and they're leaving. And it, that freaking hurt. That hurt that like literally paralyzed me. Like, I just was just like, I, 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 yeah. So, and she was a CNA at the but time. That's all the more reason why we can't quit. We and have I got spoke, to find positive exactly. ways. Of this. I spoke to a group um, in New Mexico that Leanne had caught, uh, connected me with one of when we were doing something for um, Nurses International. And I had spoken to their class. They were mostly um, uh, Native American, Hispanic students. And they were like, I told them real stories, like empower, you know, you can do this, blah, blah, blah. And they told me the most miraculous stories. And I was like, you know what? You are my heroes for going yeah. into nursing, seeing what we're going on in the news and still choosing this. And like, yeah. I told them, I was like, I promise you, I promise you that until my last breath, I will do what it takes to change this profession. Everyone's mm -hmm. like, why don't you go to NP school? Why don't you go be a PA? Why don't you go? I was like, because I'm an RN and I'm proud of that. And I want to come back from my profession and save them. And right. now I started to look at organizations outside of healthcare for advice because healthcare is such an oppressed. Mm -hmm. I literally had a meeting today that we had been working this client for months about starting this new NP led practice, blah, blah, blah. We got to the bait and switch part to sign a contract. No, we don't, we don't, we're not ready for that yet. It was because they wanted the organizations that they work with not to get mad about NPs or nurses having their own independent led practices. Mm -hmm. I was like, really? I was like, really? You're saying you're innovative, but you're scared. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, we could do this because it's low hanging fruit and it's easy. And thank God for my, my CEO of my company business. He's like, I don't want low hanging fruit. I don't want stuff that's easy. That's not why I'm in this. Mm -hmm. Nurses don't need stuff that's easy. Look at what they're doing. Look at what they're sacrificing. How could you exactly. say that right now and say you're a healthcare company? There's and a I'm lot. There's so there's proud. Uh, he's an informatics guy. And I just was like, I was almost in tears. I was like, that is what we need. You know, we have these big nursing organizations that are out there and I'm not going to name any names because I'm, <laughs> I'm still trying to take my boards after 10 weeks. And um, so I'm just, just going to put this out there. What is your nursing organization doing for you that you're spending $200 a, a year on when, you know, I really, I would like to, and speak you, on this. yeah, I would like to speak on this because I have had this discussion with said nursing organizations to the very top. Mm -hmm. Um, they are non-for-profit organizations, so their hands are tied. That's why at Nurses Transforming Healthcare, we're trying to create a business model where if a nurse comes to me and says, I need funding for this, or I need something, I can say, I support you, I endorse you. There is no hands behind my back because healthcare doesn't need hands behind our backs anymore. We need all hands on deck. I have to, I have to add something on that. You, you, I know you're perfectly aware of the fact that hospitals fund these yeah. people are this oh yeah the h yeah. the yeah. Yeah. So they can't and then, all that yeah and then the, head, and the head person of hca is on the board of uh big joint pharma's connection. all in it senators yeah. are getting kicked so, out like they, they can't perfect. do it's not a matter that they have their hands tied it's a matter of they can't because they're going to lose all their funding yeah and so i'm a nonprofit. i guess you could I say their hands in their pockets yeah, they, exactly. They, are, they don't have their hands tied behind their backs, but they yeah. have hands in their But I pocket. believe that those people in those organizations mean well. And I truly, yes. I say that because you don't exactly. go into nursing and not want to do well for other people and do others. And, you know, there's a company that we work with that does um, personality and organizational structural change. And I encourage anybody who's listening to look them up, Equilibria in healthcare, but they are going to revolutionize this country along with us. Um, but they talk about people that are healthcare, 80% are blue or green people, which means that they're very passive. They like to be told what to do. Not many of them are red yellows like Dr. Sandy and I, okay? So <laughs> there is, if we had a whole bunch of those, we wouldn't be having this problem. Um, but a lot of it is taking, we have to really like create a supportive environment and give them the tools to, yeah. to change healthcare. And, and we really stand behind them, them as they make their progress. We need to support them and use our skill sets where, where it's, it's, it's available and where it's offered. And I think, especially like if you want to talk about the whole vaccine debate, 
Well, I yeah, think, not go there. and I think that <laughs> really whatever happens, we need to stick together and not divide because it's just yeah. another division. So here's, here's my take on it. And, and I was, uh, and I don't know if I mentioned this to you last night. So everybody knows I have my own feelings about everything. And I try to keep everything that's super controversial, like, like, like fact of the matter is, and I am not Republican and I am not Democrat. So this is going to come out the way it's going to come out. Well, it should come out as a nurse. You care for everybody, no matter what your political. Exactly. Exactly. And here, and here it is, right. With somebody was trying to argue with me with policies right? That it is being mandated. Okay. Well, well, influenza was mandated, but we wore PPE. Okay. When it comes down to it, it is your body. I have no right telling you what your body needs or whatever. That's not my business. I'm vaccinated and I will go and get the booster if I need to. The fact of the matter is that is your choice. And yes, it affects our patients. And I'm not going to really get into this because like, but I will tell you this, my, my ancestors signed the declaration of independence and were also in the Boston tea party. So you, if you can only imagine how I feel about this, I am absolutely, I love everybody. I will take care of you into your last breath. And I hope to God, somebody will be the same way with me. It is important that we have to stay impartial and we have to not be all heated about all of this stuff. It's wasting energy. Why don't you take that energy and, and stop making all these different groups, all these different groups. And I was the first, you know, pretty much the first one that had this kind of group. First one is doing what I'm doing. And why don't you put your energy into something that's working? I have. It's interesting that you mentioned the um, Declaration of Independence because that's one of the things that we put out as a group of mm-hmm. nurses transforming healthcare. Is uh, we use, or I should say, uh, Dr. John Silver had put this together a uh, number of years ago, 20 years ago or so, but he pulled it out and we kind of all worked on it, massaged it. And um, what it is, is we took the actual Declaration of Independence and then we translated it into nursing needs. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it's pretty incredible because it is what nurses are saying is that, you know, it is our duty as independent practitioners or as pra- practitioners who are saying, if, if you are not doing the job, you're signed up to do in healthcare to keep people healthy um, and to make sure that costs are low and that, you know, uh, we don't have to go to this crazy uh, economic scheme at the end of life where um, I just had a friend that told me she was told that she, in, she has a problem that uh, a, there is a pill that she could take. It's $9,000 a month or a pill she takes like one in every six months but i mean who can do that and plus it doesn't cure the problem all it does is diminish the symptoms if she's lucky yeah he has to talk to me about these dang oils <laughs> i have yeah, all right oh we're not gonna, right yeah we're not gonna oh. talk about the oils um the reason and there's a reason behind that um and i'll tell you why i think it's very important that we have that discussion first and then I be, I'll say, I'll say, I'll be a guinea pig for. Um, the- well, I never believed in it till I used it, and that's my own. And I, and and that's and that's pretty much it's important. We all know that essential oils are important. So yes. what what I want to say is, um, we have a huge job ahead of us, and I'm so glad that I'm finding, and a lot of people that have been with me for years, right they've, they're on the front line too, right? So they get tired and they have a lot of things like it just gets to be overwhelming. And then you have folks that are hurting and then you're trying to keep a smile on your face. I get it. So that's, it's pretty much just had been me that's been growing Nurses Against Violence Unite. Um, and that's okay. I'm, this is, this is my passion and my dream. So it's, and this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And 
I am very grateful to find people to work with. And I'm sure some of the folks that have been with me that are watching this will agree that, you know, and that it's good for me to have people that, that well, people think you're crazy. People, well, okay, the journey of entrepreneurship. I feel crazy. <laughs> as Gary Vee says, it's always lonely, the ride to the top, right? And I think that, you know, n- most nurses are not our personality type. And I think Leanne got to the point where she's just mad enough that she became one of us, you know? No, actually, I am, I am one of you. I, I just yeah. have, uh, at 67, I think I'm kind of taming a little bit. But, oh, yeah, I'm definitely red, yellow. Really? I oh, love yeah. it. So I think that like, you know, the opportunity is there and I think it's just strategically nurses don't have business training. We don't have marketing training. We don't have any of that. And I think nurses make the best entrepreneurs. We're MacGyvers, Mm -hmm. you know, we can figure anything out. Okay. If if we don't have the supply, that's fine. Nurses are going to make it work anyway. Make this into a business (laughs) opportunity. Exactly. So I think we're the perfect people for it. Um, you know, it's just a matter of doing it strategically. And there are people out there that want to help and that want to give funding. And it's just a matter of finding those people and encouraging people to speak up. And our voices and our stories are going to what's going to drive the revenue and get the money in here to where it needs to be. The other thing is, um, you know, Dr. Sandy, you, you mentioned it earlier about relationships. It's amazing to me um, at one point working in an organization that thought, why would you want relationships with coworkers, with, with patients, with families, with whatever? And I was like, holy moly, you know, if you don't want, if, if healthcare is not about relationships, what is? And um, that's the one thing that I think nurses have in spades is that the people who are attracted to the work that we do that's what they're about is relationships. That's often the number one thing that they're about. And so that's another reason why I think it's going to be nurses leading the rest of, of uh, providers into mm-hmm. understanding that by developing and you know creating and developing and maintaining those relationships with their patients, that's where the trust comes in. You know, being uh, relegated from this practitioner to that specialist to this somewhere over here and nobody is looking at the overall impact Mm -hmm. Um, each practitioner is perhaps ordering some medication and those medications are more and more expensive and not working Um, and I think that some of the suicide that's happening not just with nurses but with doctors also and, and many other people is that feeling that they've been cut off from the soul that is relating to their patient. Even Hippocrates got that, you know, had that understanding. Well, so we used to we have to, to get there. We used to be able to save everybody. We used to before COVID, you know, we were keeping people. My moral distress came from keeping people alive that couldn't that shouldn't be kept alive, you know. And now it's like everyone's dying. And yeah. you're used to in the ICU maybe seeing a couple people die a day. Not everybody like that. And it makes you feel worthless. It makes you feel, plus you're not having that social interaction. Like when a patient passes away and the family comes to the bedside and and you say, you you know, thank you for taking care of my loved one. You know, it's been a pleasure. I'm sorry for you. That doesn't happen anymore with COVID because there's no visitors. And Mm -hmm. a lot of, I had patients die by themselves and I walked back in the room and they were dead and I didn't know what time they died because we were just so overwhelmed. And, you know, that is something you learn in school. You don't let patients die alone. But yeah, well, if I had the choice between coding someone and standing with a patient that I knew was going to die, like that's just the way it has to be. I had help. I had housekeepers, guys, housekeepers that were coming in and holding hands for us. Yeah. Because we had nobody else. We, we had nobody it. else. And I think that was just, so we created this meditation that's free from our website that any nurse, anybody can use. It's called the Exchange of Compassion. And it's a guided meditation that just allows that... The, we say to you, your patient thanks you. Mm-hmm. So if you're facing instances where you're losing patients, flipping fads really fast, it's a two minute, less than two minutes meditation. You know, just listen to it in the break room. You know, whatever you need to do in the bathroom, I don't care. But just <laughs> let that compassion exchange happen. I think it's, yeah, it's very important because it's like almost like you're bipolar. You're going from like, you know, from really super sad 
to meeting a new patient, trying to you know be bubbly and trying to be yourself. Then you have this other patient. If you're not prepared with mental health, you don't know how to take care of them. And then addiction, it's just really like, and this is even before COVID, right? So we have this like up and down, up and down, and it could literally emotionally wear somebody out to the point that I could see if you have, you know, and look, I'm going to back up just for a second in nursing school, they're only the, the main pressure is passing the NCLEX. That's all that matters. Rizaldi, why are you adding stuff for mental health and addiction? Well, um, we're about to have like right now, and I'm just bringing this up a second, a second housing bubble. And what did we have with the first one? Anyone that's been on the holistic crisis prevention.com. It is my little education program. I am actually going to be releasing it for a discounted price, especially right now to get some funding in to help get shirts and stuff like that for nurses. Um, it is, uh, talks about the first bubble and we're about to get ready to go into the second bubble and nurses still do not understand about addiction. They don't understand. And you know what? It's not their fault, but if they can't get mad because if they understand about addiction and seeing the signs and symptoms that will save them a whole lot of dealing with bad behavior on the unit. And, um, and again, it, it is another thing that they need to think about because that we have to be constantly evolving as nurses. We can't just sit there and say, okay, so here's your pill and it's getting fixed. No. Um, this is all about the frozen chickens because it isn't just nurses in the situation. It is every person across America that is not being taught or helped or mentored to really deal with those true deep soul crushing kinds of events that happen in, in so many people's lives now. If we don't know how to deal with it and everybody around you is saying, don't think about it, don't talk about it, just keep going. You can do that, you know, until your freezer is full and then things get really, really smelly and you have no idea what to do. At that point, they're dumping on top of you. You have no idea where to go or what to do. And you think that it, there is no help and that's not true but it starts with dealing with the first chicken before it gets frozen. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about people because I don't want people thinking we're talking about chickens. <laughs> cause, cause I just got done walking around in New York city and woo, even with the mask on, it smelled like urine. So just, I'm done with smells for right now, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's very important. <laughs> showering in the middle of the street. It's very important <laughs> that like the good old GI bleed guys. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's the worst smell. Ooh, my stomach is. just churned literally. <laughs> I think along with everybody else that's probably watching. So, um, it's very important that, and I appreciate you guys coming on and I'm sure we're going to have more and more talks, but let's, what are some things that you can bottom line, tell the people that are watching right now, give them some insights on how to get through their day. What, what advice could you give nurses out there? Even though that they, you know, they probably already know, but what helps you push through your adversity? Just because you're busy and you don't have the support of an organization and you don't have what you need, doesn't make you a bad nurse. You're not a bad nurse. You're a busy nurse and you're doing the best you can. And your best is always good enough. I think asking for help is the hardest thing for nurses to do because we're the ones who provide help. We're the ones who notice people who need help and we ask them before they have to be asked. But oh my gosh, asking for help ourselves is unbelievably difficult to do. So the first thing is just reach out and ask for help. And that means, you know, do you need help with childcare? Do you need help with washing your dishes, cleaning your, your house, washing your close because at this point the only thing you need to do is really take care of yourself make sure you're getting sleep make sure you're getting something to eat that's good for you may even be you know asking neighbors to bring you food because why not what do people so do that, when someone dies they yeah bring you food they do your right. laundry they do you're grieving you're same grieving. thing when you have a baby well i don't know about any of that guys i've never had any of that so but i want to tell you what gets me through that is, I've, I have some pretty hardcore goals. And if I have to write them down, I do that. 
And I know, so I'm a, I'm huge on goal setting. I'm huge on looking into the future. Um, it is very important. I'm like looking at my wall of achievements. It, it's very important. No matter what you do, you need to be happy with where you're at. If you yes. need to get off the floor, do the appropriate thing and give a notice. And then if you have to pay penalties with an agency, do that. If you have to take a break, it is okay, but please come back. Come back if you can, because I'm going to tell you, it isn't about the money. I understand the money is the most important thing. And we're trying to work with these organizations to try to help them understand about relationships and never. And when you set a goal, I have to back up and tell you this, be relentless. Do not stop it. No, you have that fire in your belly. You are a nurse and you best, you best know that you were born to be an advocate and that's why we need you so badly. And I wanna thank everybody and please know if you ever need to talk to somebody, I, I'm sure Melissa and you know yes. Leanne, they're willing to talk to you as well. You know, I'm here for you and please have people come on to Nurses Against Violence, the support group. That is where it's a lockdown group where people can talk and share about things and they know I'm on it like flies on poop. Like I do not let anybody, there's no belittling. It is a different environment. If you're not on it yet, Leanne and Melissa, please come on it because I'm going to tell you right now, you'll see our group is not like everybody else's group. Um, and it's free to join. And um, with that being said, please come invite your coworkers. If you don't like your coworkers, then you might end up liking your coworkers. And if you need to share things that you don't want everybody to know and you want it to be done anonymously, do not vent on the page. Come to me and I will vent for you in a different kind of way where, where I could keep you anonymous. I don't care if people come after me. I care about you getting to the next day. We are in this to survive. We are in this to take over healthcare, transforming healthcare and taking some essential oils or whatever we need to do for good coping mechanisms to get through to the next day. This is essential, no pun intended. Absolutely essential that we- <laughs> Breathing, breathing is the most important thing yes. you can do for your body. You know, if you look at it from a neuroscience perspective, you can change your sympathetic to parasympathetic nervous system by controlling your breath. So, and I was, be careful who you I listen was an obstetric to. nurse and I taught mothers all the time about breathing. Never occurred to me to do it myself. Oh yeah, right. And be I had to do it today. I lost my, you know what, today, and I just was like, I'm breathing. <laughs> yeah, you, you, can, you can always call me, and I'll be like, well, son of a. You know, I'll say a couple things with you and I'll be like, you know what? We've got other fish to fry and I'll just make me more mad so we can get farther ahead. Right. right. So here, here's the thing. Be careful also who you listen to and who you surround yourself with. Yes. Because as Jim Rohn says, you are the sum of the five people that you surround yourself with. And it is extremely lonely at the top, extremely lonely at the top. So if you find yourself alone, know that there are other people out there and I somehow tripped over you guys. I don't know how I found y'all and my, my, again, there's no coincidences. And that's what Kim was also saying to me. It is very, and, and I say that too, but guys, I've been a very alone, been very alone because we have well, a very, not, pretty, now. not, but you get what I'm saying. So be very careful who you listen to as far as your motivational speaker you know, if you need to get into that YouTube, um, the YouTube premium, no commercials, you don't have to listen to any of the crap and just zone in on your favorite, find your, the person you identify with. Mine is Dr. Eric Thomas. Les Brown is my personal mentor. Um, and Jim Rohn, he passed away not too long ago. I listened to these. I grew up homeless, grew up with learning disabilities out on my own since I was 16 years old, guys, not even a ninth grade education. I had no positive role models. I had to hold my, my mom together with package tape. She was crumbled into pieces. Guys, if I could do this, you can do this. Yeah. And I just want you to know that I have, that you have my hundred percent support. And I want to thank you ladies for coming on and our guest in the back. I want to learn more about that. So 
without being, without further ado, I think that's how we say it. You guys, it's been a pleasure. Please reach out to us if you need anything. You know, I think the more nurses, like this is the nurses come together. You know, we come together, we support each other, find your network, grow your network and join this network. And connect with us, um, nurses transforming healthcare.org and um, Melissa's group. uh, She also has the cortex energy systems dot org. Wonderful support. And and here's the great thing about it is that we're working to start joining and they might come on with us um, to maybe help me out with Nurses Against Violence, which I would absolutely enjoy for them to be on our board. Um, They didn't know that. So I'm just kind of (laughs) like, you know, I'm already there. (laughs) (laughs) I'm already volunteering them. So, but yeah, this is very important and essential because everybody has their own thing going and then we just all come together and we just build, we just build, build, build. So guys, it's, it's all so needed. Cool. It's all yeah. needed. We're here for you. We're working. I, I'm working 20 hours a day to try and move the dial on what we're doing. I promise you that. So I didn't yeah. forget about everyone. And, you know, we're, we're there. We have you. We, we stay awake at night working to make a difference. And if you don't think that I'm crazy enough yet, why don't you go look at the Times Square video that I have posted in the group? And then you'll be yeah. like, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's Dr. Sandy. So thank you so much, guys and ladies. And um, have a wonderful night. See you guys next week. And Bye. take care, everyone. Be well. All right. Bye, Julie. Nice to meet you. Bye. Nice Bye. to Bye, meet Julie. you. Bye, Julie. Yes. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Bye.